Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'll play another training game on two or two, depending on how the first one goes. I have 65 more points to go uh, until I complete my goal. I'll try uh, a custom challenge once more. I'll try to create a game. 2000 being the lowest. Okay, I'll try a bit higher, like 250. If this doesn't work, I will bring it down to 2000. I want to play high rated opponents ideally because then I don't risk losing a lot of rating and I also get a very interesting training game. Uh, it's it's well it's very useful playing weaker players too, in my opinion, because that's what I struggle with most during real tournaments. I often have problems playing uh, well against weaker players because I get relaxed, so that's that's good training as well. But as I said, I want to play uh, higher rated people now. 65 points to go in three days is a lot. If I don't manage to get the game in... Okay, yes, we have a game. I'm black, my opponent is 2060. I'm going to play the Karo Khan. I'll try to play my main openings here because I want to make sure that I have as much of an opening equality with black and an advantage with white. Okay, so he goes for the main line. We're going to play a carp of Karakan. So let's see what he does here. This is one of my favorite variations. Uh, it's completely equal. Black has nothing, uh, no advantage at all. But, and this is a mistake. Uh, white should usually take uh, and get my other knight into f6 because I, I can do this now anyway with tempo on the bishop and also after the bishop moves back to d3 I can play bishop g4 before I play e6 so now already uh, black has no problems in the opening the carp of Karo Khan is very risky if white goes for one of the very aggressive lines like knight g5 or bishop c4 uh, or queen e2 and often there are sacrifices on f7 and on e6 but uh, when white plays this bishop d3 uh, on move 6, uh, which is a mistake, black is equal here. And as you can see, uh, for the moment I'm threatening to win a pawn, for example. So if he does nothing, let's say he castles, bishop f3, queen f3, queen takes d4, uh, is uh, a clean pawn up for white. So he defends. And now after e6, I have my Karokan pawn structure, c6, e6. It's going to be really hard for white to play the move. Uh, d5. Now, one of the main things in, in this position, which is very, very common for the Karakan and for the Scandinavian, is whether you develop your bishop to e7 or to d6. Uh, developing it to e7 can lead to bishop f4, and developing it to d6 can lead to bishop g5, in which case you may have to retreat the bishop back to e7. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's really hard to go for a minority attack which can be played here uh, if uh, your rook doesn't have the b8 square. So, uh, where do I put my bishop? <clears throat> I've, I've played both moves a lot of times. Uh, I've played bishop d6, bishop g5, queen b6. Uh, this ruining uh, of the pawn structure for queenside castles and a lot of play. Uh, and if I play bishop d6 and he plays bishop g5, I can't really play h6 because h3, bishop h4, and if g4, I have to bring my bishop back to g6. When my h6, uh, when my pawn is on h6, then he can just take, and I have to take with the f7 pawn and ruin my pawn structure. So I don't know. Uh, I'll just play bishop e7, a safer option. I don't want a risky game. I want equality in the opening, and then... Because I know the structure really well, uh, I think I can have a pleasant middle game. And I know a lot of plans here. So, uh, as I said, the downside of bishop e7 is bishop f4. And my rook doesn't have the b8 square. So, very often, if I play bishop e7, I'm going to play rook c8 and play for c5 instead of e5. Uh, usually, when I play bishop d6, I go for e5. And when I play bishop e7, I go for c5. Black has to go for one of these breaks to activate uh, his position. If I don't do that, I'll be equal for the rest of the game. Now I have plans uh, of queen b6 if I want to. If he plays queen b3, I'm going to play queen b6. I don't mind an exchange of queens. My pawn structure is not ruined with doubled b pawns because I have the a file open. And I have moves like knight d5. Uh, 
I can also trade off the light squared bishops because his bishop on d3 is much better than my bishop on g4. But yeah, th there are a lot of normal moves. Rook c8, rook e8, uh, queen b6 is normal, knight d5 is normal, uh, bishop d6 is also okay. I've actually drawn a game like that, bishop d6, bishop g5, bishop e7, bishop f4, and this bishop tension is one of the main features in this position, which goes to show that the position is not too exciting, and the carp of Karo Khan, if, if white plays these lines, is just equal, not exciting at all, so... But I'm playing this position, these positions a lot, so I'm, I'm happy to train in this variation and in this structure, because... Well, I have a new opening repertoire now, which I don't want to play in training games. Uh, I'll play it uh, in my next tournament, which starts in 14 days. But I still will play the Karo Khan, uh, well, very seldom, but I will. So training in, the, in these structures is okay. It actually hurts not to be able to play your new opening repertoire. I play it in... Uh, I have a new account on Leeches, which I use for uh, anonymous training, and I play my new repertoire there. Uh, but here I don't want to. I don't want to show it before before my tournament. But it hurts not to be able to play it here because I I would really want to. And my goal of reaching twenty one hundred is going sort of okay. Sixty five points to go in three days. So today, tomorrow, and uh, the next day, on October first, I should be over twenty one hundred if I have com completed my goal. So if today and tomorrow doesn't go well, uh, so obviously I should earn 21.6.7 rating points per day to complete my goal. If today and tomorrow doesn't go well, I'm probably going to spend the whole Monday uh, just playing training games like an insane person. Uh, A4 is stopping my uh, minority attack idea, but... If he plays a5, does that worry me? I'm not sure. Uh, should I play c5? I don't think so. Uh, queen b6 is still a move, but then he has b4. Uh, rook c8 is a move. a6 is a move. a5 is a move. Uh, bishop h5 is a move. Knight d5 is a move. Knight h5 is a move. But I think I'm going to go for knight h5 and bishop d6. Before that, I should probably play rook c8. But the question is, rook c8, a5, is that a problem for me? Is that pawn weak or does it stop my pieces from activating? Well, rook c8, a5, he can then go queen b3, and it becomes slightly annoying. So maybe I should play queen b6 now, but b4. Knight d5, bishop g3, bishop d6 seems good. I want to trade off the dark squared bishops because his bishop is stronger than mine. So knight d5, if he goes to d2, I'm happy. If he goes to g3, I'm going to play bishop d6. And then if bishop h4, queen takes h4, knight takes h4, bishop takes d1. Should be okay for me. Should be equal, but okay. So knight d5 is a move I'm considering. I should try to play for e5 and c5 somehow. Is a5 a problem? I really don't know. Maybe I should play b6. I like b6. b6, a5, b5. b6, a5, rook c8. He's weakening my structure. I don't like that.
Knight d5 or b6, those are my candidates. <clears throat> if b6, a5, b5 should be good for me. Then my diagonal is weak, but I can play rook c8 and go for c5. So I think I'm going to play b6. I don't like allowing the move a5. That seems pretty risky. Although now I've just allowed bishop a6 and... Uh, Bishop a6 threatens bishop b7, so I should... So then I have to play something like queen d7, which is okay, which I want to play anyway, but... Bishop a6, queen d7... Yeah, that's fine. I can also go queen d5, threatening to double his pawns, and then he needs to play bishop e2, underdeveloping his bishop. So bishop a6 might be a mistake because of queen d5. We are equal on time, which is good. I'm sorry, I keep getting messages. And my phone is vibrating when I get a message and then it's... Mm, 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 mm. So that's annoying. I'll just move it somewhere. b6 is not a common move here, I have to say, but it stops queen b3, it stops uh, bishop a6, it stops a5. Okay, yeah, bishop a6 I was counting on, but now queen d5 is surely okay. Queen d5 and he has to play... And he has to play bishop e2, if I'm not terribly mistaken. So queen d5, threatening to double his pawns. If queen d5, bishop b7, I can just play rook d8 first. So, any tricks here? I don't think there are any tricks here. Because my queen is defending the c6 pawn and I'm threatening to double his pawns. If he plays bishop b7, then rook d8 is a move. Which is fine. If bishop c7, then I can play rook d7 and it should be okay. And if he plays h3, I'm going to take, he's going to probably take with the g pawn, and then rook d8 should be okay. So he should probably accept the fact that bishop a6 is a mistake and he should play bishop e2, which is never a good thing, uh, but sometimes you have to acknowledge the fact that your move is incorrect and you need to move back. So I basically got to develop my queen for free and he's going to have to retreat his bishop. And by the way, c4 doesn't work. I just take on f3.
And yeah, now my my next two moves are going to be uh, rook d8, rook a to d8, and then c5. Activating my position. Well, why would you allow that? So takes on f3, queen takes, pawn takes, take on f takes on f3, pawn takes, rook d8, bishop b7 doesn't work, my queen is defending c6. Uh, <clears throat> takes on f3, g takes f3, uh, rook d8, rook e5, I have queen d7, and then follow that up with knight d5. So should I ruin his pawn structure <clears throat> and give him the bishop pair? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want to give up my bishop. <clears throat> so maybe just rook d8 is a sensible move. Rook d8, rook e5, bishop f3, g f3, queen d7 leads to the same position. Okay, rook d8. I don't have to do anything yet. He can still retreat his bishop back if he, if he wishes to do that. c4 still doesn't work, rook e5 doesn't work. Uh, and now I'm, I'm, I'm going to play c5. I kind of want to keep my bishop, if I'm going to play c5, leave my queen on the long diagonal and try to put pressure on his king. And I would, well, if, if I knew he was going to take with the queen on f3, then I would definitely uh, take and ruin his pawn structure. But with the queens of the, on the board, it doesn't seem that pleasant, because <clears throat> his bishop can always go to g3 and sort of cover the weaknesses, and his f3 pawn is not really weak. I'm looking for ways to trap that bishop with b5. Okay, uh, rook e5, just take the knight. Uh, ooh, 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 wait, is that a mistake? Bishop f3, rook d5, bishop d1, rook d8. And then rook d8. And then he takes my bishop. Bishop f3, rook d5. Bishop d1. So for now I'm a knight up when he takes my rook. And they take his rook and he takes my bishop. It's equal and they have c5. So that works. Uh, if he takes with the g-pawn and I play queen d7, takes with the g-pawn, queen d7, what does he have? I still play c5, his queen is pinned. Okay, bishop f3, rook d5. Bishop d1, rook d8, rook d8, rook d1. I have a rook knight and bishop against rook and two bishops. And I play c5. Okay, I like that. I'm going to play that. And now c5. 
and he should be in trouble here. Because this pawn is too weak and he didn't count on the fact that his rook is hanging at the end of this line. And if I can weaken this pawn structure and follow that up with something like bishop c5, then... I'd, well, he has the bishop pair, that's true, but I have a lot of pressure and my back rank is not weak, so it's probably equal. I would rather be black. Bishop c7 doesn't work, rook d7, he doesn't have anything there. My bishop from e7 is always covering the d8 square, so no back rank problems there. And they got to play c5 uh, without being punished, and if you play the Karo Khan or the Scandinavian, if you get away with c5 or e5, then you're golden. Takes... If he takes with the bishop, I win outright. If he play, ooh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> uh, so takes takes. Yeah, it's probably very much equal. Can I try something like knight d5? <clears throat> knight d5, bishop f4 uh, is impossible. Bishop d2 and bishop c1 are the only moves. And then what do I get with knight d5? I don't think I get anything with knight d5. Is my knight better on d5 than on f6? That's the question. If it is, and I misplace his bishop, then that makes sense. Uh, knight d5, he moves the bishop, and then I do what? What do I do? Knight c7, rook takes rook, bishop takes rook, his bishop has to move away from a6. Uh, I play bishop c7, that should be equal. Yeah, so okay, knight d5. Because my bishop is always defending my rook, that's that's the big thing in this position, that his back rank is weak and mine isn't. So he now either has to choose c1 or d2, both are quite unpleasant, but still not, not enough for me to have any sort of advantage. Uh, yeah. Uh, so now I could try something like e5. Does that make any sense? Is e5 a good move? e5, forcing his rook away. If he moves the rook away from the d-file, then I can take the c3 pawn because his back rank is weak. If he keeps the rook on the d-file, he can go to d3, d2 or d1, and then I can play e4, which is overextending a bit, but could be fine. So I would say that if I play knight c7, it's a dead draw. If I go for e5, then I'm claiming to have an advantage, which is risky. But my rook is still defended, so could work. Okay, let's misplace one more of his pieces and try to play aggressively. Okay, goes all the way back. That's fine. What do I do now? Is this an improvement to my position? I don't know. So now f5, bishop uh, c4 would be winning for, for, for white because my knight would be pinned to my king, so I cannot play f5. Uh, I cannot move my bishop easily. I can only move my knight, but... Yeah, dead equal, unfortunately. 
Yeah. The problem is that he always takes with check on 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 d8. If he doesn't take with check, there are some tricks I can do, but really nothing nothing here. I'll offer a draw because this is a drawn position. Uh, if he doesn't want to accept, then I'm going to play on. But okay, he declines. Then let's see what he does. I don't think he has too many winning plans here, but let's see. The bishop pair in this position is really not not significant. Now, this is a type of endgame I've been I've been working on a lot, two bishops versus bishop and knight, and since there are pawns on both sides of the board, uh, white should hold a slight edge. Okay, so now let's play f5. I have a pawn majority on the king side, might as well push it, that's my only chance. He should put push his pawns on the queen side. I want to keep my pawn on e5 forever to stop his bishop from being active. Uh, and I also want to play against the light squared bishop, so g6, f5 is a sensible start. Uh, this diagonal I cannot control that easily, so I'm going to play with my king. And when I get my king to the queen side to control his pawns, then should be equal okay let's move my king up the board he should probably try playing b3 and bishop uh, a3 but then i'm going to play bishop e7 okay uh he now has this check and then we would be left with just knight uh, versus bishop. So do I want to allow that to check? So maybe knight d5 pushing his bishop back first. Knight d5, his bishop has to go back. Then he can play bishop c4, but that's fine. I can then go knight f6. So knight d5 seems like a good move, uh, just putting pressure on, on his bishop and forcing it to go back. And in these positions, I think it's all about the activity of the pieces. So my knight is now in the center, his bishop has to go back. So in theory, it should be a good move. If there are no tactical problems with it, then it, it works. And also from here, my knight is controlling the dark squares nicely. Uh, so now I have time for, for example, the bishop moves, king e7 uh, is still a check. Uh, so I have to play something like king f7 and then bishop c4, uh, king e6. Did, did I just do that? Oh, I didn't want to do that move. Okay, I... Ah, uh, I was... Okay, I shouldn't be moving lifting pieces when I didn't decide yet might be a good decision to move quickly though have seven minutes on the clock I don't want to allow that check that that trace of the dark squared bishops because then I think his bishop would be stronger than my knight uh, but in this case if bishop c4 I, I have king e6 so that's okay So yeah, king f7 is probably okay. I don't want to allow bishop g5, but I also don't want to play h6. That's a very committal move, uh, which means that my g6 pawn is forever weak. 
and that allows bishop c4, bishop f7 if my king goes towards the queen side. So I want to keep the structure somewhat flexible. I wanted to get my pawns on e5 and f5 to control his bishops, but no more pawn moves un until I activate my king. c4. c4. <laughs> hmm. Okay, uh, I'm going to play for knight e6 and knight c5, or knight e6, knight d4. I want to set up a blockade, uh, which is going to be hard to break through. If he plays bishop c3, uh, I'm just going to play king uh, e6. Or king f6. No, king f6 runs into f4, so king e6. I might also play bishop f6 to make sure I'm, I'm securing everything. Okay, <clears throat> uh, c b4 immediately is probably a good choice, uh, but... I wonder what he does after bishop e7. Okay, I'm going to play it quickly, and now knight e6, knight d4 seems stronger. This would be a really committal move and a bad move, because then bishop c5, knight e6, and black is strategically winning. Uh, I think a5 could be his best option here, where I would have to take that, uh, and then he takes with the pawn, and I get to play bishop c5. If he plays c5, I will win a pawn. If he plays bishop e3... Then I play knight e6. So I think I, I made a good decision. I don't think b4 was necessary just yet, because that sort of locks down his bishop. Bishop c3 now. Uh, I'm probably just going to play e4 and try to play against his light squared bishop. Okay. But... <clears throat> Okay, king f6 runs into f4. Uh, I don't want to trade my e-pawn for his b-pawn, or do I? That might not be a bad trade at all. So knight e6, bishop e5, bishop b4. That, in fact, may be a good trade for me. But if I defend with king e6... Then I am threatening knight a6. Okay, uh, but king e6 runs into f4. And then if I take, and he takes, I have time for g6. f4, if I take, he can take on g7, but then I take on g3. Then he has to recapture, and then I take on b4. So king e6 is fine. I don't think he has any tricks with his light squared bishop uh, if he plays this. Then we just trade pawns, uh, or we don't even trade pawns because I have knight d5. So I don't think c5 works. This is actually an interesting ending. I'm, I'm happy he didn't accept the draw. Maybe it was a bit too soon of me to offer the draw, but um, it is pretty equal and... But it's getting interesting now. And I, I prefer my knight, to be honest. I managed to close down the center somewhat with f5 and d5. And now his bishops don't really have that many diagonals. Uh, his dark squared bishop doesn't have a single useful square for the moment. And his light squared bishop also, unless he plays c5. So I think I'm playing well against the bishops. And I'm also a minute ahead on the clock, so... 
game situation okay so far. Knight a6, he can play c5. Then I would have to give up my knight for two pawns, which I don't want to do. So, oh, ah, okay, he wants to play bishop b3. But now I can play knight a6. And knight a6, bishop b3, bishop takes. Bishop. Yeah, that, that should work. Knight a6, bishop b3. I'm sorry, my phone is ringing now. Sorry about that. So knight a6, bishop b3, bishop takes b4, c5, check. c5 is check. Yeah, but that should be fine. Knight a6, bishop b3. Bishop takes b4, c5 check. King uh, d7, bishop takes e5, g6. Or b takes c5. Okay, I'm going to play it because I think it works. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do it. I think it's fine. I don't want to play king f6 because of f4. Uh, well, I might want to play king f6 though because he still has to move his bishop. But it seems very scary to allow his pawn to march forward. So just king d7 and play it safe. Bishop e5. I'm going to attack his bishop first. So if he takes on e5, I play knight c5. His bishop has to move. And then I have problems with this pawn. And if he takes my bishop, I'm just a pawn up. What?
Yeah, this is just going to be a draw. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, now, what's the best way to approach this position? Yeah, it's opposite colored bishops is just a draw. Yeah. I'll offer a draw now because that there's no way to win this position for any side. I don't want to waste time. It's opposite colored bishops and no way to win. Why does he want to play on? I don't understand that. Okay, does he play h5 here? I have to be a bit careful. Okay. Yeah, I have to play g6, h6, g5. I cannot play h6 first or, or yeah. Yeah, this, this is just a draw. I don't know why he declined the draw. It's going to be a boring ending, which is going to end up in a draw. Uh, because his his a4 pawn is not going anywhere, and my pawns are not going anywhere while he's blocking up the light squares. So, Not a very exciting game, but I don't think there were many mistakes from either side. So that's good. But the bad news is that I get no points. Uh, so I'm probably going to play another game later. <clears throat> Can't right now because five people have called me for some reason. I don't know what's wrong and I'll have to call them all back and see. If you want, uh, it would be fun to, to propose your evaluation at this point. Uh, just try to guess who is better and why. Uh, what am I doing here? I don't know. Uh, I'm not doing anything. Uh, I don't know what to do. There's nothing to do here. Probably just bishop here is good to stop any king advances. I, I don't know. This position is so dry that really can't find a plan. I just did this to stop g4. I didn't want g4 to happen because now after g4 I can just play e, e4, advancing my pawn and keeping the diagonal safe. And I want to keep my king uh, to control c6 to make sure it's hard for his bishop to develop. Yeah, plays g4 anyway. But now I can play... Whew, now I can play e4 check. King g3 and I can play f4 check. Then he has to move and then I play e3. So he may have messed up a bit. Let's see. He might give up a bishop here. Oh, he attacks me here. Okay, that's wise. That's fine. Uh, I don't know. 
Uh, bring my bishop here, I guess. No, I want to keep it in this diagonal so that his king doesn't have a way to approach here. Uh, okay, uh, that's good. That's all fine. Hmm. He actually did find a good plan. Am I in trouble now? No, I'm not. It's fine. Yeah, he found a good plan, but now he has to be kind of careful uh, because his bishop doesn't have an easy way to control this diagonal. So, while well, he is here, so I'm just going to transfer my bishop here to control everything. And then I'm going to move my pawn up the board. Hmm. Okay, let's just play a prophylactic move. Just to stop any weird business from happening. I'm controlling both pawns. He doesn't have time to push them both. Uh, it's fine. Okay, now let's attack his pawn. Now he's forced to trade because I'm stopping uh, bishop d4. Now we trade off a couple of pawns and it's a draw. No! No! Oh, okay. No, my king is in check. Jesus! Ah, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. I just have to play king e2. King e7. Okay. It's all good. I didn't blunder. It's all fine. Okay. Just, if I had taken the pawn, then bishop check uh, wins. So now I'm I'm still controlling both pawns. Okay. Oh, for a minute there, I thought I had blundered. Yeah, okay. We are all good. Oof, okay, I, I got scared for a moment. Whew. Yeah, it's a draw. It's a draw. It's a draw. 
Whoa, it would be really bad to miss that. Okay, uh, sensible moves quickly. Yeah, now now there's no no way for for either side to win. He should now propose a draw. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's just say good game, and sorry for the two draw offers. I didn't mean to be rude. I just thought that the opposite color bishop ending was a draw. But he proved the point there. It's it. Yeah, I almost messed up. Okay. So now. Uh, Okay. This is all I know. I've played this a ton of times. Uh, don't look at the engine evaluation. This plus 0 0.7, it's, it's never really objective. Bishop a6, uh, queen d5 is okay. And yeah, I should have taken. Rook a d8 is the third move. I should have taken. Okay. Now let's see, bishop takes f3. Yeah, I said that that it's equal and it is equal. Knight d5, best move, but still no chances. e5 is okay. Yeah. White is slightly better, but yeah, 0 0.4, 0 0.3. f5 was a good move. I stopped his bishops from activating. Yeah, c4 was weird. And now bishop e7 is the best move. And here... Okay, this is all fine. Bishop a6, yeah. Okay. And now black is almost winning. So I did play bishop b4. He did play c4. King f6. How can I play king f6? Why would I play king f6? Okay. King f6 is better. Why? I was afraid of takes here, and my king is too far away. Yeah, but we get the same position with my e pawn protected, so that's why it was better. King d7 is a blunder, apparently, but black is still slightly, slightly better. Uh, okay, fine, fine. Only move. So fine. Yeah, now it's a draw. Let's just see if I've made any mistakes. This is all correct, and I've played well. Now, this move h5... Apparently... Apparently white is better, but not by much. Now white is better. f6... What? Okay, so I messed it up. So f7. How does he win this? I think this may be one of those positions where... So, okay, I cannot take. That much is clear. And yeah, he, he is a pawn up. Let's just see if the engine can win this. Not f3, f4. h4. I still think I'm holding this. I mean, I don't know how he makes progress. I don't understand. Okay, the engine seems to think that white is better, but... What? I did mess up. <laughs> I did mess up because my king was on a light square. My king was on a light square. I had to play king f6, and that's the problem. That's what I was saying. So that's why I didn't take uh, on the next move. So now when he pushes this pawn and I play this, he just checks me and wins. So king f6 is 
a horrible blunder. Uh, king e6. I had to play king f6 staying on the dark squares. And now after a7 I just play king e7 and it's fine. So yeah, bad blunder there. So one rule that I have to remember, which I've read in 10 books or more, when playing an opposite color bishop ending, keep your king on the square opposite to your opponent's bishop. And they did, didn't follow it here. And f6 did the same thing as e6. So it was a really stupid mistake with a lot of time on the clock. Learn from my mistakes, please. Uh, and thank you for watching. I, as I said, I'm probably going to play another game later on. Uh, not right now, because I have some personal stuff I need to take care of. And I also need to call all the people that have called me. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Let me know what you think about the game. And bye-bye.